So this is our cluster gear assembly. Uh, the shaft is actually reversible, symmetrical. There's one key that's still in there I never took out. Didn't really need to. I got new bushings in here. So we're going to put this together as soon as I get some oil. Alright, I see the camera battery went down there, so didn't get any of that on film. Basically just pushed this gear on this end and this gear on this end. And so now what I'm trying to do is get it so that the shaft sticks out the same on each end. That's pretty good there, but you see I got this gear and this gear are both up against here, so now I gotta back each one off about the same amount. Okay, I'm going to go with that. Try to make your key recess the same amount on each end. And that helps assure that the shaft is centered. So we're ready to put the case on. The reason I did not put gasket sealer over the entire gasket here is because uh, all the parts I'm putting in this transmission came out of various transmissions because I had a bunch of junk ones laying around so I'm gonna just make sure everything is free and working before I because if you glue these down well you'll ruin the gaskets taking them back apart if something don't work right so Normally not an issue if you're putting the same pieces back into a transmission, but here I have a lot of different parts out of different transmissions. Now we need to have this flat oriented this way so the case can get around that. If it's like this, it's harder because the case has to slide down this way to work over this side. Actually I'm going down this side so I can move it over that side. The thing barely fits in there. some bosses up in there that you have to get that big gear passed also. Okay, once you get it down that far, you have to actually lift up this gear so you can come in underneath it. If you wanted to use gasket sealer on this, it would be a problem trying to move the case around underneath this gear. So, I came up with a better way to do that. This is a different transmission on a different day. We're going to redo it. So, the main problem is the distance from here to the case. So if you happen to have one of these, this would be the cable hold down 
that went on top of the transmission when you took it apart. It's about the right thickness. So raise up this gear and set that piece underneath this gear against this bearing and that gives you more room over here. So to get this on there I view it as a three-step process. First you have to get these flanges around this ring gear. So the case has to be on an angle to do that. After that you have to get these two bosses that are on top of the case around the ring gear. And once again you have to have the ring gear on an angle to do that. And then the third step once you get down here is to lower the case so that the lip is underneath this gear and then turn the case so that it gets under there. Now to get over the ring gear you have to have this flat in this orientation. If this is rotated like that you won't get over the ring gear because the case hits on this part. It's got to be like this. Put your spacer in place to hold the gear up. This should be oriented about like that on a slight angle so it's in line with this shaft. First go over the ring gear with the flanges. Next you go between the bosses. You have to go down far enough to move forward over the input shaft. And then you can rotate into place straight down on the gasket. I would recommend practicing that. Do it without sealer first. Make sure you got your spacer in the right place. If it sticks out too far, the case won't go past that. When you're done, you got to get in there and get your spacer out. Drop your gear back in position. Make sure you clean this thing before you do all that. put some more pieces in there so these gears can go in next uh, the grooves go towards each other and the smaller one goes in first so I'm going to just put a little bit of oil on the forks okay smaller gear goes in first And rotate your fork over a little to get that one in. Larger one goes in second. Kind of push them off to the side. Cluster gear goes in next with the small end down, small gear down. Hey, we're having a power outage or something. I might have to redo that part. Well, we had a little power outage there. Didn't last too long. It's a windy day here. So we're putting the cluster gear in there. this spline shaft here. So this part goes in the bearing down below and these go splines go through both of those gears right there.
So that's everything in there now. Next we're going to put the bolts in to the bottom uh, and not tighten them. So next we're going to put the shifter in there. And put a little bit of grease on the end. I'm using a new uh, full dog set screw. Doesn't cost very much, and those do have have an effect when they wear out. So I think it's a good idea to replace them since they don't cost much. to just put the other cover on. So I'm just going to put a little bit of oil around here and on some of these gears. The input shaft is nice and free. You can't really turn the brake shaft by hand. Now these shafts turn opposite directions, which is working the differential. But I can't turn them both. So uh, I got a brake drum here. I'm going to put on there. Now that's not very hard to turn at all actually. So that feels pretty good. doesn't feel so good. 